All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Vaibhav Singh. I'm a machine learning specialist customer engineer working with Google Cloud and joining me today. Hi, this is Rajesh Thalam. I'm a machine learning solutions architect at Google Cloud. And today we are going to talk about building production machine learning pipelines with PyTorch models. So here is the high level agenda. We'll uh, start with the setup of the problem. Before that, we'll also discuss the challenges uh, in this endeavor and then we uh, will introduce the key concepts and a development template and finally summarize what we presented uh, uh, presented here today next slide please so one of the challenges when it comes to building production machine learning models or rather putting your machine learning models to production i think uh, it is not all technical i think the first challenge that we see here is 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 rather behavioral or um systemic uh, that is the divide that exists between data science and data uh, engineering side of the house. Uh, there is there is a still that resistance towards adapting the terms and terminology of the uh, software engineering world, uh, which is like YAML files, deployment manifests, and so on and so forth. And there is uh, there is a lot of development to make things simpler and easy to use for the researchers or the data scientists, but still uh, there is a level of divide that exists. Uh, that is a challenge. And the second challenge that is what we call paradox of choice. A few years ago, we uh, did not have enough tools in, uh, in, in this uh, domain of uh, ML ops or uh, putting or making your machine learning models operational uh, field. But uh, today we have uh, perhaps too many tools and to come up with a end-to-end -end strategy, selecting the right tools can, uh, can also be often challenging. Uh, and finally, how to pace your level of automation where your team is today to where you would like to be, that is to complete automation uh, where your experimentation to model production uh, is push button or as quick as possible. So oftentimes if we try to jump that too fast, uh, it can become a challenge and the key is to pace yourself properly or to define those milestones or the steps uh, such that uh, you can get to the fully automated level. Next slide, please. So here are the three key uh, objectives uh, that we think that any team um, building production ML pipelines should keep in mind. One is uh, reproducibility and reuse. The goal is to ensure that all all the experiments, um, all the model development, as well as the pipeline development is reusable and the results should be reproducible anytime. And also uh, in certain compliance setting, you are required to uh, be able to trace back which data your model was trained on. So that is also one of the essential requirement or the goals here. The other goal is the concurrent development, and for which I think we are going to propose uh, something in our uh, proposed template where um, the streams of development, um, that is development of the model and the pipeline, and then finally deploying your model, these, these don't have to go in series, they can happen uh, rather in parallel. And finally, uh, the holy grail there, the three Cs, that is continuous integration, delivery, and continuous training. So, so uh, uh, these are the goals, and we are going to talk um, more in details about all three today. Next slide, please. So here is the, the problem setup. We are using temporal fusion transformer implementation using uh, PyTorch forecasting. Uh, this talk will not focus on the model architecture itself, uh, rather uh, focus on this temperature forecasting problem implementation that we have done using the PyTorch forecasting library. The data set we have used is the weather data set provided by the Max Planck uh, Institute. Next slide, please. So here are uh, the visualization of this whole development setup in terms of streams. And the uh, orange uh, connections here uh, are what, what we were referring earlier to as concurrent development. So these three streams are namely model, model development, your training pipeline, and serving. So uh, for the training pipeline and serving to begin, uh, you all you need is uh, what we call uh, a model stub that has the definition of inputs and outputs and doesn't have to have any architecture or some architecture. And this whole streams can then progress in parallel and uh, hopefully uh, bring some uh, more efficiency into your workflow. And to talk about these three streams, please help me 
uh, welcome our, to my colleague Rajesh. Thanks, Vaibhav. So uh, the first work stream is model development or experimentation. So once you frame the business problem, uh, which in this case is forecasting, the experimentation stream begins. <clears throat> Uh, the goal of this particular stream is to arrive at an effective prototype uh, model for the ML use case at hand. And uh, the key success aspects for this process are experiment tracking, reproducibility, and collaboration. So you start acquiring your data sources that help solve the problem, set up a development environment, such as distributed notebooks to collaboratively perform data discovery, data selection, uh, doing data analysis, feature engineering, and then creating prototype model architectures, and then implement training routines. Also during this stream, you start with a model stub or an interface uh, that Weber was talking about with just inputs and outputs uh, that are expected to um, for this particular model. Uh, again, this need not have any model architecture, which is the minimum requirement so that you can start your other work streams such as training pipeline, serving, and other integration testing and everything in, uh, concurrently. So by end of model experimentation work stream, you will have a modular, reusable, and testable source code and configuration for testing uh, creating training and evaluating models, as well as you know, the query scripts that are required for acquiring this training data and then doing unit tests and integration tests, which is version controlled. Uh, so following uh, experimentation, you need to formalize uh, the ML training procedures, which is done by implementing end-to-end -end pipeline so that these training procedures can be operationalized and run in production. And this process involves multiple sequence of steps that starts with building and um, you know, testing a pipeline and then creating configurations and then deploying pipeline to the target environment. So here you actually see one of those base development image. When you say base development image, it's essentially a Docker file that contains all the dependencies that are required to run a specific component. So a component is a set of code that actually performs a specific task in the pipeline. Like for example, here we are showing a component that does trading, which takes inputs from uh, the previous step, which is pre-processing, and then does a training job, and then gives outputs such as model artifacts or metrics. And the base development image contains all the necessary dependencies, such as forecasting library in this particular workflow to run that particular code. So once you formalize your ML work workflows, uh, the critical thing is to actually compromise these steps into a pipeline that can monitor and track for reproducibility, which are like you know the artifacts that are getting generated out of these each of these steps. So one of such examples that you can create a pipeline is using Qflow pipeline um, SDK, which we are showing on the screen. So left side is a Qflow pipeline DAG, uh, where we are sticking together components. So we already have pre-built PyTorch components, or you can create your own custom components and uh, form a pipeline. So you can execute this pipeline in a Qflow pipeline environment, or you can use tools such as in you know, a Google Cloud Vortex AI pipelines to run these uh, in a serverless way. And uh, this tool can actually capture all the metadata and lineage that is generated from this component automatically. Uh, for example, if you're having any visualizations for your metric expiration or you know, the runtime parameters, those all could be captured as artifacts and then stored so that you can come back and then reproduce your experiments or troubleshoot or debugging purposes. So once you have a model that has been trained, validated, and added to model registry, it's ready for deployment. During the model deployment process, the model is packaged, tested, and deployed to a target serving environment. As with training pipeline phase, uh, this actually goes through a uh, you know, sequence of testing steps and testing environments. Like specifically for PyTorch models, TotServe is a recommended uh, framework to deploy models in production. So it starts with building or developing a custom prediction handler that can pre-process your uh, incoming requests and then do the model prediction and then post-process the request. So this particular model handler is archived along with your trained model binaries and then run within a container which is running ThoughtServe to do, uh, respond to the production responses. And then you do this local testing to make sure uh, you know, all your containers and then all your predictions are actually working correctly. And then you slowly role to production by doing some of these deployment or testing strategies like canary deployment which will which can do a progressive way to deploy your models from uh, you know staging to production and now i'll hand it over to vibo to talk about how these three work streams are glued together thank you rajesh uh, so to put all this uh, together what we have seen i think the key concept here is that when we look at the continuous integration pipeline, there is uh, some uh, trigger uh, that is uh, indicative of some code change or certain changes in your model or uh, pipeline code, uh, which then triggers this whole build 
process. You have already seen uh, what kind of base images uh, that uh, we are going to be building in the uh, training pipeline stream. So uh, this will be built and then there would be certain uh, test uh, that would be executed against th those tests. And then this, this CI pipeline will finish with a pass fail status. On the continuous uh, delivery front, we have uh, uh, um, now we have a trigger that is usually the new data set or uh, a change or a skew that has been detected by your model monitoring service. And as a response to that, you, uh, you will need to trigger the build process and then finally a training pipeline to retrain your model and then uh, uh, review the results. If, uh, if there is a further level of automation, you can also uh, do the canary uh, deployment if a uh, model meets certain quality standards, uh, else it can be manually reviewed. Uh, yeah, without going into much details here on the right hand side, we have uh, an example manifest uh, for this whole uh, CI pipeline and there can be a similar manifest that can be built for the CD and the CT pipeline as well. Um, now, at the concept level, uh, the only difference between the CT and the CD pipeline is what is the trigger. And uh, finally, I think the steps that you're going to be executed would be similar. Hopefully what we presented today is one of the possible templates that you can consider for uh, developing your uh, or productionalizing your machine learning pipelines. And uh, hopefully what we shared today also helps to bridge that gap that exists uh, for researchers uh, in order to better understand uh, what it takes or what are the requirements to put their models to production. And with this, thank you so much. Thanks everyone.